It's a film of good versus evil that begins with a crackling fire. Perhaps symbolic of the gunfights, fistfights and kicks. It's the story of two friends, Hugo James and Thomas Washington, who grew up together like brothers, but differed later in their moral judgment. David Bande portrays Hugo James, a crafty drug dealer who wants to import drugs from Mexico to the United States, while his childhood friend Thomas Washington works for the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. In terms of directing, how does Hugo play his role here? Somehow, somewhere, this person automatically fits in, I mean, 100% into that character and gave us exactly the type of personality that we wanted, body language, um, author voice authority and everything. Hugo is a guy who believes in his money. And he thinks that with money, he can get anything he wants. Nothing can stop him. He pleads with Thomas to do everything in his power to ensure he can bring in the drugs. I am here because my goods are right now on their way to Tijuana border. My partners, they're going to be on my neck, on my neck, bro. Thomas in the movie was the guy that was, um, um, was actually being threatened by Hugo James. What I want you to do is, is to see how you can help me get these goods into the United States without any hindrance from the Drug Enforcement Administration. The diverse cast of continental Africans, Americans and Hispanics comprised of women who excelled in their supporting roles. The one woman that I'll pick out was the sniper. With that particular character, she was one person that was not scared of Hugo James. She actually brought out the authority in the woman that I wanted to see. Desperate and greedy for money, Hugo makes one last appeal to his friend Thomas. I'm gonna make you a better offer of four million dollars cash. I have a consignment that is coming from Mexico City. Disappointed by his childhood friend, Hugo seeks the advice of his partners. My contact in the Central Drug Enforcement Administration in the United States is currently out of the country. Sorry, Mr. Hugo. <laughs> this is not a decision we can make. We operate on professional basis. And there is absolutely, and I mean absolutely, no room for a plan B. Undeterred, Hugo hires aides and assassins, dispatching some to assist his female partner in Mexico. And I do not have to remind you that you're going across the U.S. borders. Here, a male aide shows two of the women how to camouflage their car. To green, to red, and back to silver. In Hugo's world, the aides and assassins don't necessarily know they're working for the same boss. So you touch me, you die. And you know what I like and what I don't like. And so it is nine million dollars Oh, there is no deal. Thomas knows his life is in danger and hires the female sniper to track Hugo down. But he's kidnapped and locked in the trunk of a rental car. Enter Jack, fresh from Africa, who's visiting his girlfriend in the U.S. She unknowingly rents him the car holding Thomas in the trunk. Once Thomas frees himself, the mother of all wars with Jack erupts. <laughs> so how does Jack get out of this quagmire? Jack got involved in a problem where he doesn't know where the problem comes from. He doesn't know how to solve it. So he was standing in the middle of nowhere. Going forward is dangerous. Going, going back going is back. dangerous. There's a sigh of relief as the female sniper tells Thomas she has spotted Hugo James. I got your boy on my crosshair. What is your takeaway message? We have so much talent. Um, it is just lying there waiting to be tapped into. Looking at the production of the dynamic range, there is clearly no shortage of the African diaspora talent in the film industry. As to get the VOA News, Washington.